Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day, whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. I'm just glad you're here. I want to thank the channel members. Every day I do a video, thank you guys, and I want to thank anyone who comes in and checks out my knife, my EDC content, my rants. Thank you for coming in. If you're so inclined, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. It'll keep you updated and it'll help my videos get seen by more people. Enough of that. This is kind of a different type of video. And give me your feedback if this is something that's interesting. It was to me because I've been going back through looking at my collection and looking at knives that, that I really at one time loved. They had a lot of hype. Um... I've not sold them, and I've been kind of carrying them lately, and this is going to be kind of a little series that I'm going to do eh, every week, maybe a, every two weeks, where I find five, six knives that I think are forgotten favorites, or knives that maybe need a little bit more, another spotlight on them, right? And starting out, with this Wear Alley P. Now the Wear Alley P is one of those kind of rare knives because my understanding is Wear puts these in production with Riot every now and then, but you can find them on the secondary market. It is a smaller, what I consider a simple, elegant knife, M390, titanium, deep hollow ground blade that is super slicey. It's kind of one of those cool gentleman folders because it is going to be on the smaller side. If we are looking at this, for example, by try not to make these videos long, keep them short for you guys. But you can see it's about bug out size. So this is a nice, you know, kind of medium sized knife, I would say. But the ergos on it are next level. I love the way it feels in my hand. I love the simple jimping. I love the smooth thumb studs, which normally I like texture. Would a conical textured thumb stud be better in black? If it looked good, I'm sure it would. These work fine, and I've got to give the designer maker all the liberties if the knife functions and it looks good. I'm not going to question it. But I really like it. This was one of the colorways, just a simple black and titanium. Whoops. But guys, it is an absolute laser beam with a fantastic point for utility cuts, for slurpy saving cuts. I love that reverse tanto, if you want to call it that. People call it other things. The thumb studs, this is a knife that has, I consider it a tight, snappy, responsive detent. So it is, if you want to call it, shake shutty, but it is a snapper. And when I look at what makes it shut, it's not as much the bearings. I think it's the pressure of that lock bar, that detent ball. This little knife, the Wear Alley P, is fantastic. I've been carrying it lately. It's got a fantastic titanium clip. I love the simple colorway. I love the way it feels. It's just a great cutter. Kind of an understated knife, a knife I didn't even know about. I didn't see a lot of hype about it. Because Wear's a custom knife maker, and when he does production runs, they're typically small. Um, and I was surprised that when I remembered that this knife existed, about a week after its drop, I went to, I think, River's Edge Cutlery, and there were still some in stock. Great lock bar access, great knife, the Wear Alley P. Moving on, this is an OG, guys. And this knife you can still get at Urban EDC Supply Company. Different configurations. This is the F5.5. This knife is one of the probably first, I would consider it hype knives that, that I brought into my collection. I've actually got to do a revised long-term review on this knife because it's one of the first knives I reviewed on my channel because I was reviewing, and still am to most part, knives from my collection. Um, but this is 
a simple, I want to say Vox inspired or Vox collaboration with Urban EDC Supply Company has probably one of the best grips, in my opinion, in terms of how it feels in the hand. Has a very thick, nice blade stock that has this tall, flat ground blade, M390. There's a laser beam. I love the blade shape. Mine was initially one that did not have the snappier side of the detent. It's natural. I want to say it's natural or brown micarta. But I did a little mod. Not really a mod, but got inside and opened and, and kind of tweaked the titanium just a little bit. And it made all the difference in the world. It used to shake out. Doesn't shake out anymore. Very, very snappy knife. Um, again, on that smaller side, so I'm not going to bore you guys with measurements. I will put the names of each of these knives. So it comes in for me as a great carry size. It's got a nice, um, what you call that, a stamped titanium clip. And I think it's titanium. Yeah, it's stamped titanium clip the steep carry goes in and out of the pocket very well these micarta handles have been very very well loved as you can tell by looking at them i've carried this knife a lot i've been carrying it a lot lately because it is such a good knife i've actually been tempted if i wasn't on a knife buying freeze this is one of the knives that i was a one and done on again because initially it did not have the snappiest detent I've played with other F5.5s, and all of them were just absolutely fantastic. And I've had option, opportunities to pick up a second or a third one, and I haven't done it yet. But I do think that this knife design is kind of timeless for me. And I know that when I'm back into the knife buying game or knife trading game, if maybe one became available in the right pattern, I'm uh, definitely a huge, huge, huge fan of the F5.5. So moving on, this is a knife that I did not think would be my jam. I think it's probably one of the smoothest, most elegant gentleman knives that's also super tactical. Um, it's so well done. It's the Tuya Jim Skelton collaboration called the Caladan. And this is the Caladan V2. And this is probably going to be the largest knife on this particular list of knives I've been carrying. I think we're going to find this is more PM2 size, but the action on this knife, I'm typically not a flipper only guy, as y'all know from if you've watched the channel, kind of my priorities or not priorities, my uh, what I prefer, right? My preferences. So the Caladan's even going to be a little bit longer than the PM2. But guys, it is contoured. This, um, not fat carbon fiber, but some similar material to cat, fat carbon fiber. You can tell right here, it's done very well. A different color scheme. I thought it was different. You've got these titanium bolsters. And I mean, absolute contoured, smooth, ergonomical handle that not only feels great in your hand, it goes in and out of pocket like a dream. You've got pretty deep carry clip. That's how much you're going to have it, you know, exposed. And before, I say before, about a year and a half ago when I was in a flipper only or flipper hole only kind of buying mode, I'd kind of ruled out traditional flipper knives, which are the knives that actually got me excited about knives, made me really like knives. My buddy A to Z picked up one of these, a V1. Um, I'd experienced it before, and it's one of these knives that it's, it's a spear point blade, which is not my normal go-to, but I like it. I think it looks very, very sexy. It's S90V. It is super tactical in terms of the handle you're not going to slide up on the blade you could go out and jab that in two by fours over and over and you're not going to slip on it it's a 
again. S90V laser beam. Whoops, that was my cutting lack of prowess. But it is a very slicey knife. I love the belt satin, the brush satin, whatever you want to call the finish on this particular blade. I've seen these DLC coated in the V2s. Um, I've seen them in a frag pattern in the V2s. I think, as a matter of fact, these are still available at Tuya's site. I'll try to leave a link to each of the manufacturer's websites. I think these are on sale, guys. And if you like, I didn't like the look of it. Closed, that was my initial resistance to it because it looks like a parrot. Hello. Hello, with that being the beak. But once I started handling it, carrying it, experiencing how smooth and how just simple and elegant it is, I love it. I think it's a, I call it my gentleman jabber. Um, come after my Slurpee when I've got this. That would be a bad mistake. But again, perfectly centered, beautiful floating backspacer. Very well done, unique carbon fiber. I've seen nothing like it. Minimal blade branding. You've got uh, Jim's Maker's Mark on that side. You've got the Tuya understated uh, Maker's Mark on that side. And then a real small S90V. You've got this kind of concealed frame lock. And you've got absolute drop shed action. The Tuya Caladan V2 is an amazing knife. I wish and should probably do more than one video on all these knives when I run them through because the ones that stick around really deserve more attention. They're great knives. This is on the full size, so I would call this a full size knife. We saw it's a little bit larger than our PM2, but it's a banger, guys. It's a winner, and I can recommend it with two thumbs up. Moving on is an oldie and, in my opinion, a goodie. This knife Got mixed reviews from my local friend group. Um, I actually bought this one, I think, from Lefty. Um, I might have bought it from my buddy A to Z EDC because several people pre-ordered it. I didn't. This is the Luft Concept V1. The Luft Avant. I don't know. Luft Concepts Avant. I don't know what I was thinking there. But this is the V1 in my Carta. This is the first knife. Uh, Jake and and um, Luft came out with this old the OG hollow ground M390 blade super 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 light knife micarta handles titanium frame lock snappy action drop shut with a very low profile flipper you can see I think that's the only branding on the knife is the Avant on the uh and it's called th this there's history in this knife this is again absolutely original i haven't touched the edge except with a strop and it needs to be stropped again um it is gorgeous it is one of my favorites that i had not carried in quite a while i'll be honest with you um but it's one that i really carried a good bit last week with it being kind of hot here we've been in a heat wave and it is super super light i'm even going to throw this on the scale just to show you how light um but it's a little bit shorter than the pm2 a little bit longer than the uh the bug out i'm guessing it's going to be lighter than the bug out and a lot of people that was their complaint that it did not feel like a quality knife oem by riot and when i say quality they were equating quality with weight since its initial release this knife comes out and is still available and is still being released in upgraded materials different titaniums different carbon fibers if i'm not mistaken they've come out with another knife the name of which escapes me right now but it's a very sexy knife um and i can Everything about the design of this knife, to me, is a winner. Um, weighs 3.1 ounces, and I want to say the blade... I'm cheating these other knives because I wasn't going to get all measury. But the blade's over 3 and an eighth, and it is... a hollow ground... 
nice belly. Really could do some roll cuts. Has a great skinning. I mean, just, it's smooth, guys. I mean, I've not experienced, I've picked one up at the shows. I've flipped them a couple of times, but I haven't had any long-term uh, experience with one of the other handle materials. And I'm sure the titanium is going to be heavier. I think the blade material might have even improved from M390. I'm not sure if they're still using M390 because I've kind of been married to this one. But this is the Luft Concepts Avant OG Gen 1. The first, probably one of the first hundred that were made. I don't know if these were numbered or not. Yeah, this is number 126. So this is the 126th of Jake's Knives. I'm stoked to have it. I really like it. It spent most of its time in my case. When I started digging through my cases and kind of doing my uh, collection dive, they're knives that I kind of wanted to earmark, to carry more, to, you know, put some of my knives that I carry all the time away and just get back to switching it up. And that's kind of what I want to do with this series of videos, is share knives that we've probably all had drop off of our radar, but they become available on Blade or uh, Blade Binge. You might have an opportunity to get one of the newer releases, and you might not remember what the knife was all about. But I can tell you, for me, the Luft Avant here, Luft Concepts Avant, is absolutely dynamite. I'm a big fan. I like it. And we are moving on. We only got two more, guys. And this is a knife that is, I think, understated or does not get enough love. And it used to get love. Now they make it in a larger model in the, um, the Drift large drift or the drift x i forget what it's called but this is an all weather salt proof rust proof corrosion proof allegedly knife that's not what attracted me to it and what attracted me to it was the look it had always struck me as a very elegant nice gentleman's carry you might even see a kind of a theme here of clips, smaller clips, wire clips, something I've really enjoyed carrying lately. This knife is on washers. This knife is the only knife on this list that's on washers, but it has an exceptionally snappy detent. I've come to really appreciate knives on washers. If you've watched any of my disassembly videos, I've been doing some modifications where I've taken out bearings and been putting in some skiff uh, thick washers. Because again, it just changes the feel of the knife. Um, maybe it's not as just drop shutty like a guillotine, but I'm kind of past the whole guillotine thing. I just like the smooth feeling of closing the knife, having it snap in place. But on this knife, the drift, the washers are part of the corrosion resistance and the low maintenance. You've got a Vanex stone wash blade. You've got this what I think is a beautiful color, kind of a bronzy, but it's a dark bronze because I would never get a bronze color. Titanium, milled, show side scale, bronze back scale. What attracted me to this knife and what really blew me away was how thin it is. It's one of the thinnest knives in my collection, which is kind of like a TRM. To me, it handles in my hand like an Oz Roosevelt. Um, and it's just perfect for my hand. It might not be perfect for everyone's hand, but that's why they make the large one now. Um, Quiet Carry, not exactly sure where these are made. I don't think they disclose who their OEM is, but it's a thumb stud, actuated knife. It is got some of the best detent, whether you reverse flick or thumb flick, whatever your game is. It's super light, it's super thin, which results in one of the sliciest knives, not just in this lineup, but in my, and this is Factory Edge. This is no Javon touch-up on the TS Pro. This is an absolutely therapeutic, slicey knife. That means it's not good for everything, but is it good for breaking down cardboard? Oh my God. I mean, the choil's perfect. It slices dices let me grab some cardboard i think i've got a little bit right here i think we've cut all the uh the sensitive data material off of my little sample piece of cardboard here so let's see if i can get this to and this is just to keep the uh what would you call it the uh anticipation of maybe there being a live 
mishap, right? So you got to keep it real. But this is an absolute cardboard shredder. And guys, I have spent a good bit of time cutting stuff down with this knife. This knife gets a lot of use. And again, stropping hasn't had any. Probably could use it. But we're going to take it back to the paper after we get this mess out of the way. The drift is was a late i was late to the game on the drift i kind of put it in my case after i carried it for a week i was amazed by it but since i've rediscovered it it's it's probably and i hate to say in my top 10 because i've got so many freaking knives that are great but this knife is as good as it gets guys i would recommend it to anyone who asked it's around a 300 hundred dollar knife again vanex steel totally rust proof totally thin as you would ever want let's look at whoops let's look at how it sizes out real quick i tried to keep it under 20 minutes and i went over i'm sorry guys there is the bug out a little bit smaller than the bug out but it's got a taller much thinner blade Hmm. About the same difference from the baby bug out. So it's going to split the difference between the bug out and the mini bug out. But if you want to get an idea of that blade stock, it is considerably probably half, maybe not quite half the size of the bug out, but very, very thin. Absolute winner. I love it. Carries invisibly in my pocket. The choil fits me perfectly. Again, a great knife. Jimping on the blade, just a winner. And then finally, a knife that I was so glad to rediscover and carry again. Again, wire clip. I don't know what that is. I just enjoy them. But this is the Devo Knives Lush. This is a knife that when it was being released, I was in love with it. I had to have it. I love all my Devo knives. Don't get me wrong. Um, I've got a lot of knives, guys. I got this in blue, and that's just a a fact it's not me trying to boast it's just i carry stuff and i forget that i've got all other great stuff that i really think needs more more love more attention more focus they're about to do another run of these so they're going to be available again my first one the one that i was able to get because this is the 80s camo, camo carbon it was sold out when i went to get it so i got the uh arctic um whatever they call it arctic storm the blue and white I love that knife, didn't use it much, came in, hung out with it for a day or two, and Mr. JD, JB for EDC had seen that I, in my video, had mentioned that this was the color that I was originally after, um, but I like my Arctic Carbon Storm, or whatever you call it, and uh, he was nice enough to reach out and say, hey man, if you really like this color, I'll be happy to switch out, I don't mind that color. He didn't have to do it, I thought it was huge, it was my first real interaction with JB, since i think we've become really good friends i respect his channel if you're not subscribed to him please subscribe to jd jb for edc i'll make sure his link's down there if i remember under this and this is the s90 v devo lush deep hologram a design kind of unlike anything that maybe it blends the traditional and the modern because you've got this long finger groove which you could pinch it open if you were you know gonna go that route easily pinch it open but it locks you've got the bolster lock or the concealed frame lock beautiful fat carbon that's done amazingly well you've got zero displacement i want to say concept was the oem for this particular knife and they knocked it out of the park you've got a front flipper which as you guys know that watch the channel it's my least favorite way to deploy a knife, but this one has actually two very distinct places you can place your finger, and they're laid out by the jimping here right on the front. I can just look at that little curve. It flips if I want to flip it. Spoiler alert, I never do. And then you've got this angle here, also with great jimping. It flips like a dream. My pre preference is just to get into there, anywhere that my finger touches the blade, let my fingernail and my fingertip grab the blade, whether it's at the bottom or at the top, it snaps through with a reverse flick. Probably one of the most, for me, enjoyable, 
light detent, not light like as in, you know, butter door light, but it's one of the lighter detents, not nearly as snappy as, we'll say, the Wear Alley P, but it's just perfect, so it's not going to fail. I can hit it anywhere with my finger, opens like a champ. You've got lock bar access that's not only cut out so you can get to it, but it's contoured. You can find it with your eyes closed. Absolutely no branding on the pivots, on the blade. Clean, clean, clean. The only branding is the S90V there at the bottom of the um, choil. And again, choils might also be a theme in all these except the Caladan V2. This knife fits my hand like a freaking dream. It is deep hologram S90V with kind of a sheet footy and maybe a Warncliffe blade that is got a detail point that is great for those detail cuts, but I like it. I'm not doing a lot of detail cuts. I'm mainly just cutting open packages, slices shit up, primarily paper, coupon books, doing weird therapeutic slicey sessions because it's just kind of how I roll. Um, but this knife carries great. It gets some interesting looks because it doesn't look like all my other knives. Um, I had, again, this is a knife that I hyped up a lot after I got it, bought it, reviewed it, put it in a couple of other videos. It got shuffled along to one of the other cases. And when I was doing my um, collection overview, I kind of rediscovered it, which was the greatest part of that exercise, which, by the way, is not finished yet. I've still got to finish up with my tiny fixed blades. Those will be coming. But guys, this knife, the Devo Lush S90V Fat Carbon Fiber Winner. These are knives that are maybe... Not brand new, but they're absolutely fantastic. I love each and every one of them. Would not trade them. They are probably lifetime knives, and it's because I've grown to love them. But I've rediscovered them, right? And that's what I'm kind of in the mode of doing is a little bit of trading, but rediscovering knives that were great, that something else great or that I perceived to be great came along. And... I lost my focus. So guys, let me know in the comments if this is a waste of time. If you like seeing some of these knives that I really like after I kind of rediscover them, spend some time with them, and bring them back to share with you. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. If you're still here and you haven't had a chance, hit the subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. Mainly, mainly look out for the guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart and choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.